Hi folks, James here. We're just going to do a little bite-sized story on how the whole digital homicide lawsuit came about. So we're going to go right from the beginning and wind it up all the way till now. I have missed a few little snippets out, of course. However, I hope that people who don't understand what's happening between the two will hopefully get caught up with this. So here we go. This all started when Digital Homicide released a game back in October of 2014 called The Slaughtering Grounds. Now Jim Sterling did a 10 minute first impression of this and didn't like the game at all. Digital Homicide then went full retard and responded with a video called Reviewing the Reviewer, in which she called him a fucking idiot and also invented the phrase Jim fucking Sterling son. The video backfired in a big way to a point when Digital Homicide fired a copyright strike on Jim Sterling's YouTube video in order to censor Sterling's criticism. This rendered Digital Homicide a laughing stock and the victor was Jim fucking Sterling, son. About a month passed and Sterling did the first impressions video on Digital Homicide's temper tantrum, which even in my eyes looked horrendous. I played the game myself and it looked like they took the criticism on the chin and it all had blown over. But that was until Digital Homicide released a trading card called the Zombie Troll for the Slaughtering Grounds and it looks like it's mocking Sterling's Russian Roulette pose, you know, can you see the similarity? Sterling then goes on and does another first impressions video, this time it's Digital Homicide's medieval work, which Sterling has labelled as bullshit. By the looks of this, this rattles Digital Homicide to a point where they have a so-called interview with Jim Sterling himself, which was, in my opinion, the most cringe-worthy interview I have ever heard. I'll link it down below so you can check it out. Now all of this seemed to have ended, but no. Digital Armacide must have felt their reputation was actually in tatters as they started putting games onto Steam Greenlight under different developer names such as Runtime Game Network, The Mac and even ECC Games. What Digital Homicide mustn't have realised that in fact ECC Games is a Polish mobile developer who sent a copyright infringement notice to Digital Homicide and in the end it actually was discovered Digital Homicide was spamming multiple games onto Steam Greenlight under multiple developer names. Now not a lot seemed to have happened until the start of 2016 when Digital Homicide released a game in early access called Dungeons of Kragmar. Now to be fair, this looks like a decent passable game and even Jim Sterling himself in his Jim Fresh or Squirty Play gave actual credit to Digital Homicide. It looks like they took the criticism in and took their time and effort and actually making a passable decent game. And even I've had a crack on it and it you know, fair play, they've actually done it, and it looks like finally this whole charade is over. Then about a month later, Digital Homicide whacks a whopping 18 games on the Steam Greenlight. Yes, I said 18, 1 8, in which Sterling then does a video on it because, you know, why not? And then we come to where we are today, where Digital Homicide has filed a lawsuit against Jim Sterling for $10 million, uh, which I will be doing another video talking about that. Uh, but anyway, I hope you've been caught up with the whole Digital Homicide and Jim Sterling story. But other than that, this is Jamesy Boy logging off. You guys take care.